Welcome back, everybody. I hadn't planned on doing another video, uh, a day in the life kind of video this week, but I walked into the plant today, I was doing my rounds, and I found a tripped permeate pump on my membrane bioreactor. And I thought to myself, why not share uh, what I do when something like this happens? Uh, this is for the context of my plant. I, I work in a relatively small plant. Uh, I wear a lot of hats in this plant. I, I do a lot of mechanical work in addition to my operation. Uh, and that includes troubleshooting pumps and motors. But I wanted to have a quick chat before we jumped into the meat of this video, and that is safety around electricity. Um, I am trained professionally to do this. Uh, I have been doing it for a long time, uh, over 10 years, and I have had wonderful teachers that were electricians and uh, pump specialists, people that do this every day, teach me how to do these things. Uh, you do not have to search the internet far to find horror stories of people who have been killed by electricity. And that includes professional electricians. Uh, it can happen to anybody. And so my, uh, my desire here is to uh, convey to you that this is in no way uh, me giving you any blessing to mess with electricity if you've not been trained to do so. Um, I do not want anybody getting any ideas from what I show you um, and go and get themselves hurt or killed. Uh, and and I, I take a serious tone here because it is serious stuff. Uh, electricity is one of the things that gets me the most, um, I don't know, on edge and focused, hyper-focused. I, 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 I never move so slowly than when it comes to uh, high voltage components. And when I say high voltage, I'm talking, what I'm working with here is three phase 460 volt motors, okay? And they will, they will kill you. Uh, so, uh, I try to keep it lighthearted and fun on this channel and, I, and it's kind of my personality. I'm upbeat and I, I really want to have fun. Uh, and there's a time and a place for that. And there's a time and a place to be serious. And that's around electricity. So um, I, I just wanted to have this quick introduction to the, to the video. I was not planning to shoot this video, but an opportunity presented itself. I have a, I have a shorted uh, VFD, a short fault rather, and um, I need to find the short. So come with me, watch what I do. And if you have any questions at all, please put it in the comments below. If you find any value in what you see here today, like and subscribe. And if you want to do these types of things, talk to your chief plant operator, talk to your lead mechanic, talk to your electrician in your plant and get trained by them. I am not training you on how to do this. Just showing you what I do in these situations. So what I'm going to be doing is megging a motor um, and looking for the short through all the different components um, in 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 series here with the with the pump motor. So let's go take a look. Welcome back everybody. We're gonna do some troubleshooting right off the bat. I came in this morning and my permeate pump on my membrane bioreactor, permeate one, was in the yellow position and that indicates that it has tripped. Um, it did not complete its um, clean in place last night, uh, overnight. We do that when flows are low. And uh, I didn't get an alarm. So I've got a couple things to deal with here. I've got to get with the SCADA programmers and find out why it didn't trigger an alarm. But down here, uh, we've got our fault on our VFD and it is showing a phase short. So um, I'm gonna do some troubleshooting. I'm gonna take you along with me on this. I've already reset the VFD. Um, it shorts right away. So, um, I don't even have enough time to take an amperage read. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, and it's already telling me it's a short. So what I'm gonna do is come on over to the permeate pump. You can walk over here with me. It's that guy right there. And um, I'll set up the tripod and I'm going to meg it and make sure that uh, the motor insulation is in good shape. Okay, we're gonna meg this motor. But before we do that, I need you, if you skip the intro to this video, Please go back and listen to all the safety points I want to tell you about electricity. Um, and mostly, I can't emphasize this enough, if you are not electrically trained, do not do anything I'm telling you to do in this video. It is uh, unsafe. I have been troubleshooting pumps and motors for uh, a decade. I have uh, great mentors and, and trainers and electricians I've worked with that have taught me how to do this stuff. Um, if you are out there working by yourself or ha do not have an in-person trainer, uh, that is, you could get yourself killed. That is not the purpose of this video is to show you how to meg motors. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you day in the life videos. I wanna emphasize that disclaimer so much as we get into the electrical troubleshooting um, because uh, yeah, I, 
I know I already said at the beginning of the video, but and go back for a longer version of that, please, if you skip this or skip that. But um, I needed to at least disclaim it uh, before we get in there. Uh, talk to your lead mechanic, talk to your chief plant operator. Um, and if, if you are the chief plant operator of a small plant and you don't know how to do this stuff and you're watching my video, call a mechanic, call an electrician. Please be safe. Um, OK, so uh, aside from that, let's get into the actual troubleshooting. So uh, first things first, when I deal with power, um, I want to go home to my family. Wedding ring is off. Um, that's gold. It's conductive and it can pull me into a panel. So whenever I open up the panel, uh, any conductive jewelry comes off. The only piece of jewelry I wear is my wedding ring. But, um, you know, some folks wear silicone wedding rings and, and oh, I know one guy's got a tattooed wedding ring. That's great. Um, I just, I, I don't, I just take my wedding ring off and, and put it somewhere safe and then, and then put it back on when I'm done. Um, so, uh, that's one safety item. The next thing is, uh, lockout tag out. Um, I'll link to the video down below, uh, in the links, um, where at the very beginning I, I did a, a little talk about lockout tag out, but I kill the power to the VFD that feeds this pump motor and, uh, um, lock it out, tag it out. So nobody can turn the power on while I'm doing my troubleshooting. The other thing is, uh, VFDs have capacitors in them. So just because the power is off to a VFD does not mean you can't still get electrocuted. Capacitors have power in them still. So um, I always, and you should always do this anyway, I check the voltage and I've already done that. My, by the way, my troubleshooting's done. I know the answer. Um, I'm shooting this video after the fact. Uh, when, when I troubleshoot, I need to focus on what I'm doing. And uh, I just thought this would be really cool to shoot a video um, since this just happened and kind of fell into my lap today. So... Um, uh, I check voltage and you always test to make sure uh, that there is no voltage. And even when you know there's no voltage, you treat it like it's live. Uh, you treat it like there is voltage. So you're very careful, you use insulated tools. Um, you don't get flippant about anything you're doing. So um, because of those capacitors, uh, even though I know I have no voltage here because I tested it, I do disconnect the leads off the VFD to be safe. Um, and the other thing, is the, the leads that come here anyway, the, the conductors, I pull them off there um, off the VFD and I use an insulated screwdriver to do that. Uh, there's also a couple reasons why I do that. One is I'm doing an insulation test. So I'm actually going to test, um, the conductors as well. Uh, so if they're connected to the VFD, it might not, uh, give me a good read. The second thing is, uh, connecting to the VFD when I'm testing the, the pump motor, if I don't, if I don't pull these leads off, uh, as well, and I leave them on and I'm connected to the VFD over there and I go to make this motor, the VFD uh, could give me a bad read and it could mess up my Megan. So you got to make sure you're disconnected completely from the VFD. So um, I'm disconnected here. What, what, what a Meg test is, what I'm doing is I'm testing the insulation of uh, the conductors. And, and how I can liken this to waterworks is think of a small leak in a pipe, a very small leak, and you can't, you're having a hard time detecting it at, 30 PSI. But if you put it at 120 PSI, that leak is going to show up. You're going to see it. It's going to be spraying water out. That's exactly what we're doing here. I'm going to take a thousand volts and push it through these conductors. And what this multimeter will do is it will detect, um, it'll detect that leakage of voltage. Okay. Um, and so, uh, the first things first, we're going to test the motor and I've already connected my, um, I like to use the alligator clips for this test because when you mega motor, you typically hold the insulation button down for a couple minutes. Uh, at, at the least I hold it down is for 30 seconds. And I pretty much got a good idea after 30 seconds what my um, megs are. But, um, you know, I, I, the way I was trained was two minutes. Um, so we're going to do, um, we're going to do leg one. And um, by the way, this goes on ground. And I, I like to clamp to the, the, the body of the motor. So leg one phase to body to ground and we're at greater than 2.2 gigs at 1055 volts so that's perfect insulation and by the way i already did the test i'm not going to sit here and hold this for a minute while you know it's sitting there at perfect insulation the other reason you might get that read is you might have a, a bad connection okay but um i know i don't have a bad connection here so if you get a, if you're getting perfect reads all the time double check your equipment double check your connection okay Another one, greater than 2.2 at 1,055 volts, holding strong. Pretty cool. Looking good. Um, anybody who's got troubleshooting experience, you're probably going to guess what leg three is going to be. It's very uh, unusual that, you know, 
one legs. There you go, 2.2 .2 at 1,055 volts. So when I do my troubleshooting, I go at all three legs because you never know. When I do my um, uh, preventative maintenance quarterlies, I just do one leg. It's, it's enough to tell you of the condition of the, of the insulation. Okay, so um, what I did in my troubleshooting after this was I actually uh, called a mechanic because I um, did a continuity test, not a mega ohm test, but a continuity test to these leads that go back to the VFD, which remember they're disconnected over there. So, um, and I had no continuity uh, across any of the legs and I thought, okay, well, it's got to be the VFD. So uh, the mechanic gave me a ring. I shot him an email. He gave me a ring. Awesome guy. I want to give him as much credit as possible, but I didn't ask if I could mention him in the video. So I won't very smart, smart guy. And uh, I said, Hey man, I, I think it's the VFD. And he gave me some troubleshooting tips and we, we kind of walked through it over the phone. We discovered it wasn't the VFD. And I said, well, I know it's not the motor. Um, and he said, well, did you meg the conductors? And I said, you know, I didn't. Um, so uh, hats off to you, uh, nameless mechanic who's wonderful. <laughs> We're going to meg the conductors and see if we find a problem. So I've got legs one and two uh, connected to the megger. And let's see what we got. Oh, great. Greater than 2.2 gig ohms at 1,055 volts. Boy, there's a story being told here. Um, things are looking good, right? I don't know. What's the odds that leg one and three are a problem? Spoiler alert, I'd say pretty high. Insulation test. We're at 66 volts and zero megs. 0.1 megs. Uh, that insulation's toast. There's a short between those two conductors in... Uh, in the conduit. So, uh, yeah, troubleshooting done. And actually, as I hold it, what you're not seeing, uh, you might be able to see, we're down to 41 volts, 15 volts. I'm, I'm putting 1,000 volts through this, and that's what's, that, it's only holding on to 15 volts at zero megs. There's our problem. Uh, it's legs one and three. Uh, and the conductors that go back to the VFD, and remember, I'm disconnected over there. So um, we've already come up with a plan. We're gonna have to pull new conductors. It's in a con it's in a conduit that's full of conductors. <laughs> it's just like, like here's the conduit and here's the conductor size. It's like jam packed. So we're gonna actually drill a hole in our cabinet. We're gonna run new conduit over here. Um, it'll take a few hours. I'm not gonna document that um, un unless you know I get a wild hair and it'll go in a different video. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the troubleshooting that might happen in a wastewater treatment plant. Um, if this gave you any value, please like and subscribe. Uh, share it with your friends. Uh, but please be safe. I, I just can't emphasize that enough. Um, I don't want to be, uh, uh, the guy who's out there spouting off all this stuff and somebody goes and gets themselves hurt. I'm just gonna, when it comes to this stuff, you, you're gonna, you're gonna get so tired of me here, uh, tired of me saying it, but I'm going to continue to say it. Be safe. With that, please comment. Is there anything that you would have done differently in this troubleshooting? Do you have anything to add? Um, do you have any questions? Please put it in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one.